Hello, as we begin this unit on the Revolutionary War, we're going to begin with the 15 vocabulary words that you saw on your pretest. And keep in mind that um, for the next few weeks, we'd really like you to begin studying now for your vocabulary summative assessment, which will be later in January. So keep that in mind as we begin. Also, we really want you to know these words in context, not only for history, but also in a sentence that would make sense. So um, with that in mind, notice that your notes for this video are a sort. And I want you to think back to elementary school with your word study sorts. And I want you to do the same thing with these words. Um, go ahead and cut them out the way that you would have before um, at the end of this video. And keep in mind that for each sort, the headers will be a term, the definition, a picture, and a sentence. So follow along and fill in the answers on the video for each term in the definition space, and then cut your sort and try to match the term with the definition, the term with the picture, and the term with the sample sentence at the end of this video. I really encourage you not to fill in the blank on your sort for the sentence. Um, so that you can use that blank to help you as you sort thinking through what word goes in this sentence. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So beginning with the first term that we have for this unit, we have the word boycott. Boycott basically means that you stop buying something or using something, a good or a service of a company or a country as a protest. So um, the picture here just says made in China with a big um, red bar through it because some people in our country boycott things that were made in China um, for whatever reason they um, don't agree with um, that country or um, some of them boycott some people boycott things from a certain company in order to make a statement that they don't like something about that company um, in context to what we're learning about in the Revolutionary War the Patriots actually boycott something they boycott tea because of the tea act and um, British government had actually put a monopoly on tea. People in the colonies were only allowed to buy British products, including their tea. Um, and this made colonists mad because they were required to pay a tax every time they bought tea. With that being said, they protested that and they boycotted it by not buying the tea, by not using tea in the colonies. Your next term is the word taunt. Taunt means to make fun of, ridicule, insult, or put down a person. I want you to think of bullying. Taunting is an action word, and it means to make fun of, to be mean to. And uh, I think that picture that you have associated with taunt is very telling. Um, in the same way, um, think about how sometimes we will taunt uh, a government if we don't like the government. Um, and the Bostonians actually taunted the British soldiers guarding the king's money in Boston. Um, you'll learn about the Boston Massacre. And this was when a mob of people actually were throwing snowballs and throwing um, rocks at British soldiers in Boston, making fun of them and taunting them. And in retaliation, the British soldiers shot into the mob and killed several people. Um, this is called the Boston Massacre, but it all began because of a taunting mob. Your next word is avoid. And avoid means to keep away from or to stop oneself from doing something. You can see that little mouse right there. He is avoiding the mouse trap. And so we can um, use this in all kinds of different ways. Maybe we are avoiding sweets for a while or we are avoiding television maybe to get more studying done. Um, but anyway, um, John Hancock wanted to avoid Avoid paying his taxes on the goods he was bringing to America. And um, in, in um, you'll learn that John Hancock was very wealthy. He was a big businessman. And uh, with importing goods, 
um, through the shipping industry, he would have had to have paid a lot of taxes on the imports coming in. And he was trying in every way possible to avoid paying that tax. Sometimes he would use illegal methods in order to avoid paying his taxes. The word Patriot you've probably heard before, um, and the New England Patriots football team is named after this idea of Patriot. It's a person who vigorously supports their country and is prepared to defend it. So we think of the people living in the 13 colonies who decided to declare their independence from England and make their own country. These people were Patriots, and they oftentimes had to really stand up um, for their beliefs and put their lives on the line. They risked a lot by going against the king and going against the British officers who were stationed in the colonies. The sentence there is, if you were for American independence, you were considered to be a patriot. I really like this join or die cartoon. Benjamin Franklin actually drew it, um, and it shows the idea of divided. If the 13 colonies were divided, um, they would not have had as strong of an influence to defend um, their colonies from England. But together, together united, they would have a strong impact as a patriot community uh, against England. And we're going to learn about the Sons of Liberty coming up. And the Sons of Liberty, another name for a group or kind of a club of patriots who um, felt the same way about England and their tyranny. Your next word is to violate. Violate means to disrespect, disregard, ignore on purpose, or mistreat someone else. And you see the two pictures there. You can violate someone with your words. You could also violate someone physically. Um, I want you to think of the word abuse here, too. To violate someone means to abuse them. And... Um, in context with history, what we're learning, the colonists believed that England wanted to violate the rights they had as English citizens. The picture right above is a violation of privacy. You see, the redcoats, the British officers, um, would actually go into people's homes and search their homes without a warrant, without any cause, really, except for trying to find evidence in order to um, show that the people living that that house were not obeying the British government. And um, they would barge into people's homes and search their stuff. And in a way, this was kind of an act of terrorism to these people. That's a huge reason why we have a right to privacy in our Bill of Rights. And we have um, uh, that clause in the Bill of Rights that said um, that you, you cannot just go in someone's house without a warrant um, in order to search their house. So keep that in mind. Violation of privacy um, is, is disrespect for a person and their rights. Your next word is smuggle. Um, smuggle means to move goods illegally into or out of a country. You can see those smugglers there in the baggage claim. They're smuggling, I think, money in and out of a country. Um, in the same way, John Hancock, again, he would sometimes smuggle his merchant ships past British tax collectors, again, mainly to avoid the tax. He did not want to have to spend extra money just to do his normal business because he was being punished by the British government along with all the colonists in the name. Your next word is Parliament. Parliament means the government of England or Great Britain, and this group of elected officials, the elected piece would have been the House of Commons, and the appointed officials is House of Lords that make laws for the country. In the same way that we have a bicameral system with the House of Representatives and the Senate, Parliament does too, except for the fact that the House of Lords are appointed. They're not actually elected. They're born into wealthy families who have held office for years, hundreds of years in England. But Parliament becomes a, um, a big idea here in our Revolutionary War Unit because they're the ones who are ignoring colonists' desire to be able to have a say in the way that they're ruled and in the decisions that are being made uh, regarding taxation and a the acts that are coming through. So your, um, your uh, 
sentence there is the British government, Parliament, needed money to pay their war debt, so they taxed the colony. The next word is um, the word arms. Arms is a synonym for weapons and ammunition and armaments. Obviously, many of these words have multiple definitions, so you have to really look at a sentence in order to gain the context of what meaning the word is, is using in a sentence. So obviously, arms on your body is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about weapons, and we're talking about guns, ammunition, gunpowder, cannons, the those kinds of things. So um, in context to what we're learning about in history, the Minutemen were hiding arms from the Bridgers because they would be needed to fight at Lexington. Many of the um, colonial towns had buildings like this one right over here um, that you could find in Williamsburg. This is actually called a magazine. Again, another word that has many meanings, but the magazine building here would have been a place where the militia or the neighborhood army of the town would have kept their weapons in case that they were attacked by Indians or in order to defend themselves for any, any reason. So keep that in mind. Um, here's just some storage inside of the magazine. And, and here's a painting of Lexington and Concord, the battle, the first battle of the Revolutionary War happening. whole reason why that battle took place is the British were actually coming to capture the militia's arms um, in order to um, take away their defense system. Um, in, and that was a huge dis, um, um, it was a it was a huge threat to the colonists. They no longer were going to be themselves against the British and so they fought to defend their arms. And that's how the first battle started. Your next word is customs. Customs mean uh, the taxes put on by a government on imported goods. So I want you to think of a ship that has a lot of cargo and it's coming into port. So you can think of a box and a big money sign. The import coming into the country is going to be taxed. And the word that represents that special tax is called customs. So there was a customs office, there was a customs house in Boston, and it's still there today. You can actually go see it. Uh, obviously, they've built skyscrapers around it. But the British kept their trade taxes in the customs house on King Street in Boston. So in this way, customs is being used to describe this particular office called the customs house. But inside there, they had officers and they had tax collectors who were um, actually doing the transactions in order to get the money from each of the imports that came in to the barber. Your next word is repeal. Repeal means um, to, to usually it's a law or an ordinance or a public policy that is taken back. So you can see there in that cartoon picture, um, the helmet law is actually being ripped in half. Uh, whatever law, I'm not sure what it's for, um, but whatever law is being repealed, it's being taken back, it's being taken away. And this actually happened. Parliament um, took away the the Stamp Act because it was so unpopular in the colonies. Um, you can see this cartoon and it's labeled the repeal. Um, but the Stamp Act was a terrible act that really infuriated a lot of the colonists. And um, Parliament actually listened to them this time. Um, they were also not, uh, not being able to enforce it very well either. But in the colonies, the British decided to repeal the Stamp Act, and that's what would go in the blank. Treason. You've heard this word before. Um, treason is the crime of betraying one's country, especially by attempting to kill the sovereign. A sovereign is another name for king or um, leader there, or overthrow the government. And I like that cartoon there of the two men making hands with the swords behind their back because they're going to stab each other in the back. That's the idea. Treason is stabbing your country in the back. And in context to the revolution, you would be put to death if you committed treason against the king. So all of the patriots who were going against the king and saying, we want America to be our own country, they were committing treason. And one of um, a famous patriot is known as Nathan Hale. And Nathan Hale actually was hanged because um, the British found him to be a patriot and had evidence against him and said, he's committing treason, so we will kill him. Um, he 
he was very heroic, and um, he's known as a famous patriot who died for his country. Your next word is coerce. Coerce is the word. And this word means to persuade, but it's not a positive word. It's a negative word. So it means to persuade an unwilling person to do something by using force or threats. So I want you to think of that robber who's saying, uh, who's holding up um, that man in the top hat and asking for his money. He's persuading him to hand over his money, but he has a gun in the man's face. So obviously he's using force in order to get what he wants. Um, in context to history, um, Parliament passed an, another series of laws called the Intolerable Acts, and these um, Intolerable Acts <laughs> were intolerable to many of the people living in Boston. They were meant to punish the people of Boston, and they were meant to coerce or force the people of Boston to obey the king, to pay their taxes. They, they were actually done after the Boston Tea Party because Parliament saw the Boston Tea Party as just such a um, embarrassing thing that happened to them. So they were forcing or coercing the people of Boston to pay back the, t the tax and all of the that they had wasted by throwing um, the tea into the Boston Harbor. Um, this picture right here is a cartoon from way back in the day in the 1700s. And you can see that British man right here with the crazy wig. Um, he is forcing this person right here who's representing the colonies, who's representing freedom, America um, and making him swallow the tea. Um, that was the whole idea behind the intolerable acts. They were coercing the people um, to drink only um, in a way. Excuse me for my cold here. Um, declare. To declare means to say something in a serious, deliberate, and obvious manner. You can see the town crier there ringing his bell. His mouth is wide open. He's declaring the news. Back in the day, um, 1700s, many people still did not know how to read on their own. They also were trying to, they didn't have a lot of paper or ability to print a mass amounts of newspapers. So um, a town crier was actually a person's job, and he would actually ring a bell in the middle of the town square, and he would declare the news. He would read off the newspaper to people so they could stop and they could listen and know what was going on in their town and in their community. Um, we use the word declare um, with our history unit in the sense of the patriots. The patriots wanted to declare their independence from England. That is why the letter to the king is known as the Declaration of Independence. They're declaring, hey, we're our own country. We are no longer ruled by the king. And so the Declaration of Independence has that whole idea of declaring their freedom from England. Hey, king, we're our own country. Your next word is interfere. Interfere means to prevent or stop a process or activity from continuing or being carried out. You can see that cartoon picture. The two kids are fighting and the person in between is like, hey, stop. They're getting in the way. They're stopping or trying to prevent um, the fight from continuing. They're interfering. Um, you've heard this word probably before, but to interfere means to get in the way of, to prevent or to try to stop. And the colonists did not want the king to interfere interfere with their rights as Englishmen, um, their rights to um, elect their own officials who would make laws for them, that they would have representative government, and they would be able to elect those people um, and appoint those people um, who would be taxing them. So clearly the government of England was interfering with the lives of those in the con colony. I also want to bring your attention to the way this word interfere is used in a sentence. Oftentimes you will find the word with right after the word interfere because obviously you're interfering with someone or something. So keep that in mind when you're looking for how to use it and how to fit it in a sentence. You often want to use the word with right after it. Our last vocabulary word is the word tariff. Now, tariff is also a, another word for a tax to be paid on a particular class of imports or exports. So similar to the word customs, a tariff would have been a special tax that anything coming in or actually anything going out to other countries, pe the, the people um, actually doing the transaction would have to pay a tax. So the word here, um, 
tariff, fill in the blank of this sentence, a tariff is a trade tax on imported goods. And right there you can see um, the tax collector um, actually taking the tariff from the ship captain who may be bringing the goods, which would be um, an import, or maybe who's taking the goods to another country. That would be an export on his ship. All right, so just a reminder, I really encourage you to cut out your sort and to use this as a way of studying for your upcoming vocabulary quiz. Create an answer key by writing lightly on the back of the sentence, picture, and definition, um, the key word that matches it so that you can check yourself as a study tool. I have found that sorting is a wonderful way to remember and to learn how these words are best used. I hope this helps. I'll see you in class.